We talk about growth mindsets all the time, but finding an activity that can really bring home this message for all students can be difficult to do. Well, this activity does just that. Hi, my name's Tom Moore and I'm a maths teacher. Now I've got a challenge for you today and I must warn you, it's actually quite difficult and you may even want to give up. But I implore you, please make sure you keep persevering and you have a growth mindset. You'll see why that's important later. So let me show you the activity. Now your challenge is to make two different regular polygons using these four pieces. As you can see, I've got wooden pieces, but you'll find a link to a PDF below where you can actually cut out these different shapes and rearrange them to use to make the puzzle. Some of your students may ask, well, what's a regular polygon? A regular polygon is a two-dimensional shape that has a name that we can all agree on. For example, a square, a triangle, a rectangle, a pentagon. They're all regular polygons. So that's what we're looking for is two different regular polygons. An irregular polygon would be something that looks like this. Now, as you can see, we would all agree that it's a shape and it's a polygon, but it's not a regular polygon because we can't agree on what the name of this shape would be. So if you're thinking about fast forwarding through this video to find out the answer, I'm sorry, but I'm not actually going to give it to you. But I would like to talk about growth mindsets. And also we're going to talk about this thing here called the learning dip. Now, many of you will have experienced a learning dip at some point in time in your life. You might not have called it the learning dip, but I guarantee you that you have experienced it and probably more often than you actually realize. What happens is you'll just be strolling through life and then all of a sudden, a challenge just comes and hits you from nowhere. For example, the puzzle that I've just shown you now. It's at this point in time that you have two choices. Do you choose to take the challenge on or do you say no to the challenge? Well, if we say no to the challenge, then we'll never progress and we'll never learn anything or move anywhere. So the other option is to take the challenge on. And this is where the learning dip begins. Taking the leap is one of the most daunting parts of taking on a new challenge. You might stumble, you might make mistakes, you might even come out with a bit of a bruised ego. It's at this point that you've probably reached the bottom of the learning dip. And this is generally evident by elements of self-doubt asking questions such as, why am I even doing this? Can't I just give up? It's at this point that you have two choices once again. Do you choose to give up? In which case, you're just telling yourself that you can't. And once you tell yourself you can't once, are you more likely to then go on and tell yourself you can't for other challenges too? Or do you then keep going and persevering? Initially, what happens is you'll make slow progress. But over time, that progress will speed up to the point where you're achieving things that you didn't even realize was possible from the beginning. You might also need to ask for help, and that's okay too, because when we work together, we'll be able to achieve so much more. Eventually, you'll get out of the learning dip, and you'll be looking back at what you were able to do and realize just how far you've come. So what has this got to do with the puzzle that I showed you? Well, the puzzle's great, but it's really not about the puzzle. It's about developing a growth mindset within our students getting them to experience the struggle, but then also the elation once they come out after being successful in completing it. Through talking about the learning dip and going through this process with students, it can really help to hit home that message about how important growth mindsets are and talk about that in relation to maths. For those of you who are really brave, don't even try the puzzle before you go into class with your students. Try and figure it out with them. Show your vulnerabilities and actually work through it and see if you can come up with the answer as a class. By doing this and explaining the whole learning dip process, it'll really give an authentic approach to really explaining how this learning dip works. So, all the best and never give up. My name's Tom Moore. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share this video with your colleagues. We'll see you next time.